So I've been thinking about electricity for a very long time. And um, when I did my PGCE, um, I realised I didn't understand it at all, um, even though I could pass exams and do questions and stuff like that. I really didn't understand it. So I had loads and loads and loads of misconceptions. Um, but I thought about it very hard for about 20 years, and I think I understand it moderately well now. Uh, one of the analogies that is popular nowadays is the, uh, is the rope loop analogy. And uh, this has got some really good bits to it, but I think it's got some really serious problems as well. And uh, by way of sort of friendly discussion, I thought I might share some of them with you now. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, basically the idea is something along the lines of, well, what goes on in the electric circuits is uh, invisible and conceptual. So wouldn't it be cool if we had this really sort of cheap tactile thing that we could use in class um, for uh, students to get a real a real feel for what might be going on in, in electric circuits and that's what that's what this rope loop is about so the rope loop basically represents an electric circuit um, and I guess it represents the charges in the wires of an electric circuit um, it has sort of some basic ideas like typically the teacher acts as the battery and they pull the loop and typically a student will act as the load and they tend to squeeze the loop and as the teacher pulls the rope, the student feels their hand warming up a bit, and this shows that there is a, a shift of energy from the battery to the load. Um, and the, you know, from an energy point of view, the, uh, the, the current acts as a pathway between the, um, the, uh, the battery store and the thermal store of the, um, of the load, in this case, just a resistance. And it's got some quite cool features. For example, um, the charges all start moving everywhere at the same time. Um, the speed of the rope is the same everywhere. So that means the current is the same everywhere. Uh, the uh, energy gets shifted at the place where there is most relative resistance in the circuit. Um, so there are, also, there are also all sorts of sort of good stuff associated with it, but I think there are also some really serious problems, and um, those problems I think come from uh, this reason, which is that the physics of what's going on with this rope loop is actually really quite subtle and quite complex, and the physics of what goes on in electric circuits is also quite subtle and quite complex, and so you're asking um, a a subtle and complex uh, idea to explain another subtle and complex idea. And I think one of the problems is if you don't really understand it particularly well, you kind of imagine that the mapping kind of does like this, that the that the rope loop concepts and the and the electricity the electric circuits concepts sort of map onto each other like that, but they don't really. I think they kind of map onto each other something like that at best. Um, and so what this is good for is it's really good for demonstrating what's going on. It's dodgy at explaining what's going on, and it's really terrible at predicting what's going on. Um, and I, what I wanted to do was to use some examples from the Internet. And I haven't I, I tried really hard not to cherry pick them. I basically looked at every YouTube clip there is about the rope loop analogy. I've tried to find every article there is about the rope loop. Um, and um, as I say, it's, it's got some really good bits to it. But I think when you try to stress it even a little bit, it really starts falling apart. I thought, first of all, we'd just make sure we agree on what the analogy actually is. So there are three ideas that we need to find analogues for. So the first one is current, so that's the easy one, and that's just the rate that the rope moves past a point, so for example, through this load. So current and speed of rope are analogous. So high speed, big current, low speed, small current. Okay, that one's fair enough. Uh, the next one is the resistance of the load, and we tend to measure that by the squeeze of the student's hand. So big squeeze, big resistance, gentle squeeze, small resistance. That one is a bit dodgy, and we'll see we'll see why in a bit. And then the final one is the battery voltage. Now this this one is really dodgy. The most obvious analog is something like the force with which uh, the teacher is pulling the rope. And if you do the maths, particularly if you compare formulae for power, power is current times voltage, uh, and power is also for this force times velocity, where the, the frictional force on the hand and the velocity with which 
the rope moves through it. Um, so if, if you compare P equals IV with P equals um, FV, uh, power is force times velocity, you'll find that force um, and voltage are the are the natural analogues for that. So it's force rather than kind of effort, you know, sort of power type thing, like how much I'm struggling. It's like literally the force. That's the only one that really makes sense. So to explain the problems with the rope analogy, I'm going to compare it with this simulation that I've written. <clears throat> now, this looks like an analogy. Um, it, it looks like a, what's called a donation model, but it isn't really. What this is, is a mathematical um, model for the way a circuit works. And the physics for this is hard baked into the model. The code creates the model. So this is unbreakable. It always gives you the correct answer. The model is mathematical based on the physics, but the uh, the numerical output is visual, or at least instead of a numerical output, there's a visual output. And there, and there are three elements to this visualization. One is that current is visualized as the speed at which these black dots move. Uh, the voltage is visualized as the amount of red stuff around each black dot. Now, this, uh, this, this carrier model, this donation model, is uh, sometimes people are a bit suspicious of it because they say, well, it's not really what's happening. They say that, um, that you know, charges don't really carry energy. Um, and my take on that is, yeah, that's quite possibly true. But in the same way, forces aren't really arrows, are they? But we're quite happy to represent forces as arrows. And if we do, it helps us uh, explain things and it helps us do calculations. So if we do represent uh, potential as the amount of red stuff per unit charge, which is kind of how it's defined, then it makes it much easier to understand what's going on and to make accurate predictions. So we're just pretending this, what this is what happens because it'll make it easier to understand. Okay, So the potential, the voltage, is the amount of red stuff per charge. And then the final thing is the um, these, this expanding red energy circle. And this shows the rate at which energy is shifted in the um, in the bulb here. Now, um, the physics for this is hard baked into the system. The only thing that's um, that's highly idealized is that the filament bulb is uh, ohmic. Okay, the filament bulbs are not ohmic. They're not just they're, they're nowhere near ohmic. But because this is kind of a teaching tool, it is a good way to make the numbers easy. Okay, so, so what's the first misconception then? Well, the first misconception, the first problem with the rope loop analogy is that um, the current in the rope loop is kind of free floating. It's kind of dependent on how hard the teacher happens to pull the rope, whereas the current in a real circuit is fixed. I mean, that's the, that's the whole point with, uh, you know, there's the whole point with this idea of kind of resistance or is the whole point with what's sometimes incorrectly called Ohm's law is that for a given PD, for a given battery voltage and a given bulb resistance, there is one and only one current given by I equals V over R. If I change the battery voltage, there is a different current. If I change the bulb resistance by, for example, taking the bulb out and putting another bulb in, then there's a different current. OK, so there is one and only one current. But with the rope loop, uh, the problem is, is that um, it's just up to the teacher to decide how hard they pull it. For a given squeeze, I can pull it slowly or I can pull it fast. OK, it's just up to me how I do it. It's not set by the circuit, if you like. And uh, the reason for that is, or one of the reasons behind it, is that the 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 dynamic friction when the rope is moving doesn't depend on the speed of the rope. Okay, for a given squeeze, um, I have a certain amount of, of, of frictional force between the the hand and the rope. Slow speed, the frictional force is three newtons, say. High speed, three newtons. Medium speed, three newtons. It just doesn't depend on the speed at all. But in an electric circuit, the PD does change with the current. If I change the resistance of this bulb here, the current around the circuit will change. You notice that as the current changes, the PD across this bulb will change. Watch. 
see the current goes up and the PD goes up as well and there are two ways of looking at this one is that if there is a particular current through this bulb that happens to have this resistance then that gives a potential difference of this or you could say in order for this current to flow through this bulb you need this potential difference across it but whichever way you look at it i can't just choose the current once i know the bulb resistance and the potential difference the bulb resistance and the potential difference implies this fixed current um, but with a rope analogy i can just pull the rope at whatever speed i like Problem number two, with the rope loop model, cause and effect are reversed. In a real circuit, the battery voltage drives the PD across the resistance. Look, when I change the battery voltage, the PD across the resistance changes, and you can tell that by the amount of red stuff per black dot, which tells us something about the voltage. Uh, or I can use the voltmeter. I'll just connect that across the bulb like that. Look, as I change the battery voltage, the voltage across the bulb changes. But if I change the bulb resistance, which again, I'd have to do by changing the bulb. But look, if I change the bulb resistance, see the current in the circuit changes. You can tell the, the uh, black dots go slowly here or fast there when the resistance is low. But the voltmeter stays the same. I haven't changed anything about the, uh, the battery voltage. So the... The resistor, the resistance, doesn't affect the battery voltage at all. The battery voltage is the thing that causes the PD across the load. So remember with our rope loop, the how hard you pull with your kind of battery hand is the ana uh, analogy for the battery voltage. So if I pull hard, this is meant to be a big battery voltage. And if I pull softly, this is meant to be a small battery voltage. But the thing is, and this, this is where the, uh, this is where understanding the physics of the rope loop comes in. The thing is that the, um, the squeeze that I have on the resistance that sets the dynamic friction of the rope as it slides through, and that's a constant. And so the harder I squeeze, the bigger the frictional force here as it slides through. And in order for this bit of rope to move at a constant velocity, or the whole loop to move at a constant velocity, the forces on this bit of rope have to be balanced. So I have to pull harder with this hand. So big resistance, harder pull. Or small resistance, um, less hard pull. And because force, the force that I'm applying at the sort of battery hand is meant to be the analogue of voltage. That means that the battery voltage is kind of driven by the resistance of the load. And that just is completely the wrong way around. We've seen that the battery voltage stays constant. And what changes is the current, not the PD across the, um, across the resistance. Problem number three is that you can't change how hard you pull, but you think you can. Now, this is it's perfectly reasonable to say, look, I'm going to show you what happens if there are more batteries in series. In other words, if I have a bigger voltage battery, um, and all that happens is the current gets bigger. Look, I'm making it go faster. Okay, you're just making it go faster. Now, the important thing to realize is that you're just choosing to make it go faster. What you're not doing is pulling harder. Remember, how hard you pull is set by the frictional uh, force between the hand and the rope for the for the load. It has to be the same because this is balanced. Okay, so you can't pull. Uh, you have to, you can't pull any harder than the frictional force without accelerating the rope, without the rope getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Or if you don't pull enough, the rope just stops. So in order for the um, rope to go at a constant speed, the battery force, the battery pull, has to be exactly the same as the frictional force. So you can't change how hard you pull. You can only decide to change how fast you make it go. Problem number four. There's no fixed relationship between how hard you squeeze at the resistance and how fast the rope goes. With a real circuit, if you increase the resistance, the current gets smaller and smaller and smaller, like this. 
In other words, you can see the charges go slower and slower and slower. And there is a mathematical relationship between uh, the resistance and the speed of the charges, provided that the resistance is uh, ohmic, it's provided that it obeys Ohm's law. As we said before, um, filament bulbs don't obey Ohm's law, but we're just pretending that they do because it makes the numbers easier. So um, if I look at this current here, that's three amps. Um, and if I double the resistance um, from three ohms to six ohms, I'd expect this to end up as one and a half amps. Let's just see. There we go, half it. And if I double it again from 6 ohms to 12 ohms, I'd expect that to half to something like 0 0.75 amps. Let's just see. Okay, 0.75 amps. So there's this like fixed relationship. If I increase the resistance, then I decrease the current, and there is a mathematical relationship between these two things. With a rope loop, though, there's no fixed relationship between the squeeze on the resistance and how fast the rope moves. If I increase the squeeze, I can choose to pull the rope slowly, or I can choose to pull the rope quickly. It's just up to me. The fifth problem is that the rope loop predicts that bigger resistances make the battery work harder, um, and that they create more heating. Um, and this is just not true. Um, I think this is partly due to what's called the constant current misconception, whereby people have this idea that batteries, instead of being constant voltage providers, which they are, they think of those being sort of implicitly constant current providers. And what they imagine is, is that the battery tries to provide this particular current, um, and if there's a big resistance, the battery has to really struggle to sort of force the current through. Um, and as we'll see, this, this isn't what happens at all. Uh, the battery is a constant voltage provider and it responds to a bigger resistance uh, by reducing the current. Um, and just to show you, I'm not making this up. I had a look on YouTube. I could only find four examples of the rope loop analogy on YouTube, and they all have this misconception. Um, and there was lots of good stuff in there as well. Um, so I'm just going to pick the clips that show this misconception. So have a quick look at them now. And one last thing the teacher could do, picking on a pupil that you like, is you could ask them to hold the rope slightly tighter. And what will happen is as you pull it through, with it being a rope, you get a lot of friction. So you can talk about, well, a lot of energy has been transferred at the point where resistance increased. OK, now I want Catherine to hold the rope tight. If I pull, I should be able to pull it through. It's harder this time. Would you agree? Yeah. Add in another hand. This one is going to hold on to the rope. For the hand that is serving as the source, it now feels harder to cause the electrons to move through the circuit. The second hand is playing the role of a load. Again, if you've got more people holding on to this, so imagine you and some people in your class, if you had 10 people all holding on with their hands like this, it's actually going to be really hard to pull that rope around because the more people you have holding on to it, the more resistance there is, and then that resistance all that adds up. So with a real circuit, if I increase the resistance of the load, what happens is the current decreases. So these charges, which we imagine carrying energy, you know, we imagine carrying energy, arrive at the bulb more slowly. Look, low resistance, they arrive at the bowl quickly. The energy spreads out into the surroundings quickly. Slowly, if we increase the resistance, then the charges move more slowly. The current decreases and the energy is shifted more slowly. In other words, the battery is not working as hard. Look, this battery is not working as hard. I can tell this as well by looking at this power meter. Look, here's a power meter. It doesn't really exist, but this is a thing that we have in the simulation. Look, if I have... Um, a low resistance, big current, lots of power, 12 watts. And as I increase the resistance, the power goes down and down and down. And the power that, you know, the uh, the rate at which energy is shifted in the bulb goes down. It's shifted slower and slower and slower. And so the rate at which energy is shifted from the battery goes down and down and down. And in other words, the battery is working less and less hard as we add more and more resistance. 
not harder and harder. The battery doesn't try to overcome the resistance. It responds to a higher resistance with a smaller current. So those are my thoughts on the rope loop analogy. <laughs> hope you found it. Uh, hope you found it interesting and not too confusing. Um, I suppose conclusion. I would say uh, the rope loop is a really good demonstration. It's really good at uh, kind of looking inside the invisible workings of electric of an electric circuit and saying, you know, look, kids, this is kind of what's happening. Um, because the physics of the rope loop and the physics of the electric circuit don't really map onto each other very well, it's not a good explanatory tool. And so you have to be really careful about how you use the rope loop to kind of explain what's going on. Um, and it's, it's an even poorer predictive tool. It really doesn't predict well how real circuits will behave.